Okay hey guys, we made it to the airport and um, I'm a bit late because I had to um, don't turn off my boarding pass. But we're on our way now, just heading for security. Okay guys, so we got through security, all good. I got a free gin um, from the, the nice lady. I don't think I've told you guys this, but I'm actually scared of flying. So I got myself a quick beer. Okay guys, I finished my beer. Now it's time to go and uh, grab the flight. We're on our way. in Belfast. Finally. I had to find a bus now. I actually got like a free beer from the flight attendant because I was a little scared of flying. So um, now we need to find a bus. So guys, we made it on the Game of Thrones tour. Currently I'm on a ferry right now. We're crossing over to, uh, to Winterfell. walking along he walks past that door and he goes into the next door all right and that's what they had and that's where Tyrion was okay it's not open till 11 guys <laughs> okay so you've got the archway here all right so the side of that archway is probably what you recognize a bit more because it is where the little climbing wall is all right so whenever you see them and you see the start family, they're all lined up there waiting for the entourage to arrive. They come in through here, all right? And you look back, you'll see the lower part of the wall for Bran to climb down, all right? So the, the building there itself then had an eave built on it, all right, to bring it out from the building so it looks more like stables and work area and things like that. So when he climbs down the wall, he climbs down that little section, rolls across the roof, clicks over and climbs down, all right? So that was all built out from that corner. If you look at the ground, I mean, this is what they do everywhere they go. Whenever they get to a place and they're starting to set it all up, they put lots of peat down, okay? And, and uh, some of that sort of, you know, you know that mulch you'd get for the garden and stuff like that, and they just build it up. And then it makes the whole place look really dirty and muffy. And then they start to then fill it full of the props. They add in uh, the sets that they're building, and then they start to bring the people in, okay? So you can see here we've got a green screen, okay? And um, you've got another little bit of green screen there. That's what they'll do whenever you come along. You'll see green screens if you're on set. And we've got this little archway. So we know it's that the base of that, all right? And what we need to look at then is this. So we have the tower, okay? You can see there's the back of the family all lined up. They would have been lined up just basically behind where these tents are. And you get that kind of view down. So that's where the toilets are. Okay, there's a little bit of a turret being added on that side, but this is the main building here, which is that one. And if you look at the top of it, you see this line, that's where the roof line is, and these are little drainage holes. And if you look up there from the right to left, you'll see that you've got one little square drainage hole, and then two. Alright, so if you look up there, you see the right hand side, there's one, and then there's two. Alright, okay, because that then becomes that. And if you look very carefully, you see it goes one, then two, one, then two. So they've taken that image, picked it up, turned it round, put it back in. They've copy and pasted the old window. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> it is literally built up like that, okay. And then that's the gateway, and you can see there's red brick on that. But what they did was then they hung some banners on either side and they had a garland. All right, of like ivy and things like that, which covered all that red brick. Yeah, so, all right, so that's that entranceway. So that's that, that's where that wee bit of green screen was. They've stuck in that bit of building, 
and then the other green screen then picks up these buildings in the background. So you are actually standing in the set that they use for Winterfell. Although it looks absolutely nothing like it at all. Next to is known as the Narrows. So the entire sea that we drove around, that huge big bay, all goes in and out through there. Alright, so you can see what I mean about how the water was coming in so fast that the Vikings couldn't row against it. So that's why they renamed that bit the Frank Fjord. We have the Queen's twin brother, okay, a guy called Jimmy Lannister. <laughs> And uh, he's been captured by the opposing forces, all right? And he's being held captive uh, by these, uh, by a group uh, who are the Starks, all right? This is another big family. And Jamie's a bit of a wild boy, and he tries to escape, all right? And during his escape bid, he kills Tarn Car Stark, all right? So obviously the Car Starks are a bit upset about this, okay? And Rickard is wanting, Rickard, his father, is wanting uh, retribution. He wants Jamie Lannister's head. Unfortunately, Jamie Lannister is being held um, by the mother of the Starks in the belief that she can trade him for her daughters. Yeah? Okay? So she thinks that he is her main bargaining tool. Therefore, he's obviously very, very precious to, to her. So, the car Starks are getting more and more restless. And what she does is she hatches a plan with this female knight uh, called Brienne and to sneak Jamie Lannister away from the Car Starks, all right, and get him back to King's Landing, where he's from, to try and trade him for her, her daughters, all right? Yeah, we all happy enough? Yeah, okay. So what they do is they, ha they head off, and they, they leave the camp, and they catch a little boat, yes, you might remember, and they pull up, on the beach, if you look there, that's that tree, okay, they pulled up here, alright, so they're coming across the, the rivers, alright, in their little boat, there it is, pulled up just on the beach, a bit of a hard time about her sexuality and all the rest of it, okay, and he's saying that, you know, he's a real man and all the rest of it, you know, has she ever been with a real man, and, you know, he's giving her all this hard time, and they're walking what they do is they come along this little bit and they see three tavern wenches hanging from a tree. Okay? And these tavern wenches were from the Starks. And he's turning around and says, well, look, look at what you've signed up for. There's the Starks killing their own women, you know what I mean? Probably because they slept with the Lannisters. Alright? And these women were found hanging from this tree. Okay? So if you imagine somebody was given a little pen sketch, right? Do you think he could go out, find us somewhere where we could maybe pull up on the beach and somewhere we could hang some people from? Do you know what I mean? Because we've got this little bit that we need to play out. And it's important as well, this little vignette, because at this stage, yeah, Brienne then is forced to fight to keep Jamie alive, all right? And she's fighting the Stark Banner Man. Uh, first one she kills pretty quickly, but the last one she gives a lingering death. And really all this is over because she wants to give these women a proper burial. Alright, so this is the tree, alright, that, that they were hung from. And it's a little bit further into the autumn time here, you can see there's a lot of leaf litter on the ground. Alright, uh, but one of the reasons they like filming in, in these sort of areas is, this is a beech tree, alright, uh, it's quite a sexy tree. And uh, you'll notice as you go up that the leaves aren't very close in, all right? So you've got the branches coming out and the leaves are all down on the end of the branches and they're small leaves. So you end up with a space underneath the trees. And the odd time when it does shine, the sun does shine, you get this lovely dappled light coming down, all right? So it's really nice for whenever they're filming. And if you look here, you've got the tree as a centerpiece and you've got the woodlands and things around it, all right? So they're moving from the riverlands down, okay? Along, it's heading towards the King's Road. Okay, so this is what this is supposed to do. This is also a historic site as well, um, because in the 1600s when... This is the picture, this is actually a screenshot, okay? And you can see it's looking up that direction there, okay? Because you can see they've got one co triangular corner, one square corner, and one rough corner. So that's the rough corner, and the triangle corner, and the square corner around the side, okay? And here you can see what they've done is they've put a couple of extras and things on the roof. Alright, so this is a long shot looking in, alright, 
Now, the reverse of that is looking down into this field just at those trees. So that was where Rob's camp was. Okay, so the view from the hill looking down into Rob's camp is this one. Now, Game of Thrones, what did I say? They had to be an hour from Belfast. One of the other rules is they have to have vehicle access. So guys, we just stopped for lunch and in this amazing, amazing pub and they actually have the real cloaks worn by Ned and Captain Stark. It's pretty awesome. And then a backdrop of Rob's, Rob's camp. Ned Stark, Jon Snow, Bran, Ira, Captain Stark, we have King Robert, Queen Cersei, and Joffrey. Box his ears a few times, don't worry. But we look like trouble at the very outset. So, um, and then again, in the course of their stay, we kind of got to know the things that I've eaten. A bit of banter and a bit of crap with them, and saw the very human side of them too as people. So that was good fun. So if you have an opportunity for an independent return or visit, uh, you can ask to stay in whomever room turns you on. <laughs> All right. So this is the paint hall in Belfast. This building is so big you can fly an airplane through that door and out the other side. It is massive. It's one of the biggest buildings in Europe. Mm -hmm. This is me with Woad. They put Woad on my face the day of Khaleesi and Carl Drago's wedding. You walk past uh, lots of sets in the uh, paint hall. So you go and sit in the seat and you take a sneaky photograph. You know, right? <laughs> that's, that's why you take one. That's my son Ross. Two weeks before last Christmas, he rescued Jon Snow on a boat. You'll see it in a minute. That's Ross with Jon Snow. He's usually with me, but he can't be here today because he's in the film again with the energy. They shoot that and then they pan over to the theory. This is all indoors. He drags this girl, the Queen's friend, into her house and he, hold, he pushes his sister and she said, Don't push me. I'm in child of Carl Drago, I'm now Dothraki. And he says, I'm not wearing this Dothraki rags, you remember that? Mm -hmm. no. That's me again with the Queen, the Queen behind me. Uh, Susie was in Castle Ward a few months ago when I brought the program to shore. Of course, she be famous. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she just looked at me. One blank looks. Don't ever talk to a goat. This guy's got one blue eye. Graven, this guy's one blue eye. I think he's a white walker, maybe. <laughs> did he die in the film? I think he did, didn't he? Anyway, here he is, back again. <laughs> this is Viseri Khaleesi. Myself in the middle again. I had to walk behind him. They were on horses. That's my other son, Cal. He's one of the twins. So guys, we just had an amazing lunch. And we spoke to one of the extras from Game of Thrones. He was in the Dothraki. So he was showing us some really, really cool stuff. Now we're at the Abbey where Catelyn finds out that about Ned Stark's death, and also the widow ruined ruins there. They were actually used for um, when Rob Stark. Well, people were pledging allegiance to Rob Stark. Some of them there, and a few in behind. Okay, Rob is sitting to the front. All right. And it looks like they've just finished having a bit of a meal and things like that. Okay, it's one of these shots. Some people think it's inside. Some people, think, you know, well, I thought that was inside. Well, it is inside, but it's inside outside. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a couple of things I want to point out just while we're here. So you have a big table, and on the table here you've got candles. All right. And what they would do is they would have the candles and things lit on it. If you were on a scene like that. Um, and then what they have is these little things called fire bars. And what it is, if you imagine a small gas canister and it has a little tea bar on top and it has holes drilled in it and they light it and it gives a very floppy flame. And what they do is they hide those in around the place. Okay? So you see the candles flickering in the wind or what have you and then you see the reflections going around. Okay? So that's what they do. Action. <laughs> So do you get the idea? So that's just, you know, it gives you a rough idea of the way sort of, you know, things work on a day. So you get all suited up, tooled up, you come down, and they'll have the actors and all about, and they'll give you 
your instructions put you in your various places and all the rest of it. So you can see here, what they've done is they've just made a bit of a pathway, putting leaves and things down for her. So she walks down here, and then where does she go? Well, if you look over there, you can see there's three trees taller than all the rest of them, and the middle one is dead. The tree on the left is the one that Rob was hacking his sword off. All right? But that's the farmer's private land, and he's got a fence up so he can't get over there. But just at the bottom, What she does is she just walks into that wooded area, just past that beech tree, she comes to the next tree, and that's where she breaks down. Alright? So she's walked through the camp, she's kept her head held high, she goes down there, that's where she breaks down, she starts crying, and then she can hear this <coughs> going on in the background, and it's Rob, he's just over the rise there, and he's bashing the tree. So as we're now in Tullymore Forest, this is where the first scene in Game of Thrones was filmed. Um, when the guy from the Night Watch discovers the White Walkers, and also when the Starks find the, the, um, the direwolf pups. Oh, yeah! You had young Will up there, okay. He finds the finds the remains of the wildlings, okay. He gets chased around by a, a white walker, and instead of being a good boy and going back to Castle Black, he does a runner, and he gets picked up by the Starks, okay, and then he's executed, okay. With the sword you were playing around with earlier, and uh, on the way back then from their sort of you know Saturday afternoon execution or whatever, uh, they're coming across and they come across this bridge. And if you come on down here a little bit, basically what they do is they find then the carcass of a stag here. All right. So you guys are sort of on camera side again, um, and there's only sort of game alone, room, game of thrones lures, you know. Um, this one looks like the animal has been sacrificed on the altar, which is a bit more like what happened to Ned if you know what was kind of sacrificed. Um, so it kind of worked out really well for them. So. The pups, when they were little, were stashed in behind that stone, okay, and lifted out, and passed down up along them. And then that stone that you can drop the cross from there, uh, that's where the last little pup was found, just at the bottom of the Okay, so, you get the idea. Um, again, these little vignettes, the thing about them is they always tend to have something that, like, that, that, you know, a signature in it. See it's on snow and he's just lifted the last little pop out. Alright, so just from that tree. And um, just across the way there. But we've got an expression in Northern <laughs> Ireland and I am not promoting violence in any way, but that's a tarot, that's a face you wouldn't get tired slapping. Alright? <laughs> You slap it with your right hand and you slap it with your left and when I got tired you use somebody else's, you know? So yeah, he slid down the bank apparently and ended up in the river. Uh, he, he was just over there, he was a bit to the weeds and things were coming down. Apparently he lost his footing. Um, to much hilarity, I was, I, I was told. Um, but this little scene, okay, it finishes with them with the dogs. And that's the ending shot. Right, and it's actually really beautiful. You know, and it just finishes off this vignette. And do you know where it's taken? This point here on the other side of that river, by the other side of that track. And what it does is you're looking straight through that bridge to hit that stone, which is directly in line with it. So the stone is right there in the middle of that bridge. You know, there's no need for that. The story's finished. Yeah, that little vignette is finished. They've talked about the they're filming here. Um, they can actually close this road off to traffic. So this main this main area here on our left, cell one, um, if you walked in through there, you'd find yourself in the throne room. Okay, so most of the indoor sets are in there. So everything from the eerie to, you know, this 
the bathroom or whatever. There's also, if you look up, you'll see there's two doors open, the far door. That's where the top of the wall set is. Hey guys, so I'm just back from Belfast. That was a really, really, really fun trip. Um, I met some amazing people, had an amazing time, and the tour was incredible. It was a lot more than I thought it would be for the price. So definitely go over to Northern Ireland, do the tour if you have the, t the time and money. Um, you won't regret it. Um, I'm going to leave you with this last little clip. Um, so. In my hostel there was an extra staying um, in my room and he was a wildling and I, we just had a couple of drinks one night uh, in our room and had a bit of banter about what we think is going to happen in the new series. Obviously he knows a bit more than me but you can't tell me. So uh, I hope you enjoy this little clip and um, thanks for watching the video again guys. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is Billy. Uh, Billy, um, yeah. so you're a wildling? No, I'm worried. <laughs> so, how have you heard about this country, man? What are, what are you saying? What time do you have to be up tomorrow? Um, what time do I have to be up at? Yeah. I don't have to do anything. Else. Are you going to the set tomorrow? I might be. I've made any decisions. You're going. <laughs> Tell us about season six. It comes after five. The Lannisters buy all the dinosaurs. The Lannisters? Yeah, and they use them in, in their army. Well, seeing as he told you about the dinosaur, I'm Tyrion playing, gets a sex change I'm as well. Can you, just, can, can you just tell me what happens in, in season six? Tyrion gets a sex change, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, he buys a big pair of Do you remember, kids. listen, do you remember the tarp where they said they actually, he got his nose cut off? Mm -hmm. It wasn't his nose. So he decided, <laughs> hey, I'm already halfway there. So, <laughs> yeah.